If you haven't done so yet, please make sure you pause the video and try to answer the question first on your own before listening on. Our first step in determining the volume of this solid is to graph the two curves that are given in the question. The graph of y equals 6 minus x squared is this upside down parabola that's colored in orange, and then the horizontal line y equals 2 is shown in blue. We've colored in the region that those two curves enclose in green. Now we're revolving about the x-axis, so we have to imagine taking that shaded region and spinning it around the x-axis, and it might be helpful to draw a reflection of this green region over that x-axis. And by drawing the region reflected over this axis that we're revolving the region around, we can see that there is a sort of empty region within the figure. And whenever you have this empty region between these two shaded regions, you're going to be using a volume by washers method. So let's take a look at that formula. So here is that formula, and if you look at it carefully, you might want to pause the video, you'll notice that we're integrating with respect to x. And that's going to work because we are revolving about the x-axis. If we had been revolving around the y-axis, then this actually would have been a dy. But in this case, we're going around the x-axis, so we're going to leave this dx. In order to work with this formula, we have to figure out what is known as the outer radius as well as the inner radius. We'll begin with the outer radius, and one way of understanding that is to mark a point on the curve that is located above the other curve. So hopefully we can see that the parabola is located above the line y equals 2. So we're going to begin with that curve. We can mark a point on that curve. And what we do is we measure a distance from that point to the axis that we are revolving around. In this case, we are revolving around the x-axis. So we're going to measure a line from a point on the curve to the axis that we are revolving around. That line right there will represent the outer radius. And if we look carefully, that line is a vertical dimension. It's measured in an up and down fashion, and therefore that would be a y value. However, we know that for the parabola, y is equal to 6 minus x squared. So when it comes time for the outer radius, what we're going to do is plug in 6 minus x squared for that outer radius. Now for the inner radius, we take the curve that is below the outer curve, so that would be the line y equals 2. We can mark any point on that curve, maybe about right there, and once again we want to measure a distance from that point to the axis that we are revolving around. Now in this case that distance would be right there, and that distance is also a y distance because it's measured vertically or up and down, and we know that for that second curve y is equal to 2. Therefore, the inner radius is going to be simply 2. So we'll be plugging that in. Don't forget to square both of your radii. And then we'll put in dx. So this is the setup that we need in order to calculate the volume. Our next step would be to write 6 minus x squared twice, since we're squaring it, and then we're going to FOIL it out. And so that would be the result. Notice that we also squared the 2 to make 4. One thing we forgot to include are the values of a and b. Now a would simply be the smallest x value at which the curves intersect. So if you go back and see where the curves intersect each other, you can see that that x value is actually negative 2. b will represent the larger x value at which the two curves intersect, and we can see that that larger x value is positive 2. So we'll go ahead and plug in negative 2 and positive 2. And if your professor expected you to derive that algebraically, you could actually figure it out as follows. We know that where two curves intersect each other, their y values are the same. So what we could do is take the y value of the first curve and set it equal to the y value of the second curve. We'll briefly show that work over here. We would subtract 6 from both sides of this equation. We would then divide by negative 1, and then take the square root. And of course, when we take the square root of 4, we get both a, pl a, a positive, sure, a positive 2 and a negative 2. So that verifies what we had determined a moment ago by looking at the graph, that the lower x value is negative 2, and the upper x value is positive 2. 
Now, let's combine like terms in our expression here. We have 36 minus 4, so that's going to become 32. We can now integrate term by term. So the integral of 32 with respect to x will become 32x. For the 12x squared, we know that we have to add 1 to the exponent to make it a 3, and then divide by that new exponent. And so we're going to end up with a 12x to the 3 divided by 3. But of course, 12 divided by 3 is 4. So we can actually back up and just call that 4x to the 3. Same rule for x to the 4th. We add 1 to the exponent to make it x to the 5, and then divide by that new exponent. And then we include our limits of integration from negative 2 to 2. We will next go ahead and plug in the upper limit first, as we always do when evaluating integrals. And then we will then plug in the lower limit of negative 2, and we'll subtract those results. And notice that we included the first cluster of terms in its own set of brackets, and then the next cluster of terms in its own set of brackets. That will avoid any sign errors. And when we carefully evaluate this, we should get 384 over 5, and then we still have that factor of pi. So we tag that on to the end. If you did it on your calculator, you might also get 76.8, and then the factor of pi as well. So these are actually both equivalent, and therefore the correct answers.